How's it going everyone? I want to do a quick update on the portfolio and the reason why was because around the time of the turn of the month between October and November, during that period in Q3, that was big tech earnings season. And as you guys know, in our you know public YouTube portfolio, I hold a good concentration of three big tech companies in particular, and these companies got sloshed. So I remember Google getting as low as $83 per share, Meta got as low as, I believe, $88 per share. Amazon got as low as like $86 per share. Very testing time for the portfolio because after such you know stark great performance, um, basically the gutting of these three companies in particular sent this portfolio into a place where, so the indice I like to use to assess kind of my personal performance is uh, the S&P 500 from the moment of inception from when I bought him. So as you guys know, only spent about 10% of my portfolio uh, originally invested in things like uh, Google and Meta. And actually waited, I waited a good period of time for the S&P 500 to get down to a range of 380 and then I started to really buy and then 360 and then I really started to buy heavily. But yeah, as of this time, we are actually uh, continuing our outperformance of the indice and that was actually because of a really painful dip that I had to buy, which was that dip I referred to, the Q3 big tech earnings. So while the S&P 500 remains around four and a half percent down. I'm actually really happy to say that we have a small, small gain on our portfolio of uh, 0.3 of a percent. So yeah, if I to give you guys an overview on some of those dips I bought, um, you know, as you can see, they're just really, um, these four companies in particular add to mostly like the big tech. And then I did add a little bit into Warner Brothers there. But I think the thing I just really want to mention is as I was buying these companies, you know, I was buying Meta in the high 80s to the mid, you know, and then I was buying Alphabet all the way down to like 83, buying Amazon, you know, as Amazon was dipping. I didn't feel great about it because I just, in, in all that over, emotionally overwhelming time, nothing nothing felt good as these companies were dipping lower. And I, I personally feel like they had room to keep going lower amidst all of the, the horrible consumer sentiment and everything else that was out there. A lot of fear was going around, but I just kept reviewing. I kept reviewing my thesis. I was like, what fundamentally has changed about these companies other than the macro uh, economic environment. And I just simply couldn't, for the life of me, I couldn't find anything changing. So despite whatever I was feeling inside, I still knew that according to my process, I had to be a buyer of stocks here. And that's exactly what I did. So the thing I just really want to elaborate on is <clears throat> when the dip does come, you might not be perfectly rational and you might get some sense of emotions, but don't let those emotions control you. Because as an investor, you almost have to think with a part of your mind, above what other your emotions might say. The more and more you can side on your emotions and just think with the more rational part of your brain, I genuinely do believe that the better you will do in the long run of investing. So what I had to do essentially was I put $375 of my own cash into this account. It's almost like it was just an opportune time to take funds. If you were a portfolio manager or anything of that nature, just as value investors, you know, that dry powder, that cash, that's sometimes like really one of the best weapons we do have in downtrending markets. Some other things I want to talk about with this portfolio, um, kind of been scaling back my position in Dropbox, uh, been scaling back some positions here, uh, sold a good amount of my BlackRock position, although BlackRock still doing pretty good for itself, um, sold a good amount of Nokia. And the reason why was because that Finland with its geographical positioning to Russia and all that um, geopolitical risk right now with the war and everything, I'm just not comfortable holding as much of that 5G company as I originally thought for the long term. I might go ahead and liquidate that position entirely as well as BlackRock here at some point in the future, but have been working my way and scaling out of those positions, as well as PayPal. Um, when PayPal was around the $90 mark, I did sell a good amount of it. Um, and I am kind of probably looking to get out of that entirely. Um, I just kind of want to be more amazed with like um, some other buying opportunities out there. One thing I just really want to mention is that I feel very comfortable as a value investor knowing when to buy stocks. However, I don't particularly feel amazing at selling stocks and selling is very difficult. Even some of the best investors will tell you they have an incredibly hard time with selling. Now, for example, I wish I held the entirety of my original BlackRock position uh, before I started looking it out of it. If I had closer to a 10th of a share and now I have like 0.02. BlackRock has been a pretty solid foundational financial exposure stock to hold as of this year. There's an old saying that it comes from the Star Wars series that only a Sith deals in absolutes. And that's kind of how I feel about selling. I, I feel like there's not like a huge reason, a red flag reason to sell all right now. 
I normally don't sell all of everything right now. I kind of like scale back. I sell in kind of incremental parts. Now, for example, if I sold all of my BlackRock when I want to, you know, buying BlackRock at 5 of 87, maybe selling it close to like 650, but now it's at 712, I'd be really upset with myself selling all of it at 650. I'm pretty glad that I still at least have some of it to maybe sell at a later date, hopefully well above 650. And yeah, I'm just really happy with all these positions that they've just been like slight gains in the portfolio. Um, although some things have changed, for example, like Nokia, you know, it's just good to have there were assets that created a slight bit of alpha to just kind of like bolster the portfolio through all the tumultuousness that the portfolio has been with kind of like warner brothers being a laggard and then as well as like you know the big techs kind of also being very volatile and laggardly i do worry about this portfolio's overexposure to tech however i'm kind of looking for like a better way to balance that out like maybe if like the city group price came back down a bit to add or below my cost basis, I would add to that. But I also talked about how there's like steel companies and that kind of industrial exposure. I do want to get into this portfolio because like, you know, this is a portfolio where I do tell you guys, this is almost like as if I'm managing someone else's money. I take it with that kind of like sincerity, that kind of like slight bit of extra risk tolerance that I don't have in my personal accounts. If you guys ever saw my personal accounts, you see a whole bunch of shares of a company like Clean Spark CLSK that I just did a video on. Um, I just have a whole different risk threshold in my personal accounts compared to this account. I'm a lot more conservative with this account. So I highly doubt you guys will see any day, any company under like 5 billion market cap in, a, in an account like this. Um, and, the, and the reason why is just kind of, those smaller market cap companies can have such a more difficult time of really making a moat for themselves and being really like a, a staple in the American economy that just won't go away. Um, you know, developing that staple, that that moat, that's something that smaller market cap companies uh, have a diff more difficult time with. As you guys can see, um, these are some of the plays I was pulling during during this tumultuous time. You guys see me kind of like aggressively buying Google, Amazon, Meta during this period. Uh, that was just because at the valuation with kind of how I feel about those companies in the long term, I, I just felt like there's no way I couldn't buy them. Um, always collecting dividends along the way, but um, you know, and uh, over the course of this time, you're gonna see me transfer $375 in cash into the account in increments normally in 50 to $100 increments. And yeah, you know, I was just really happy to like sell out of some things like PayPal when I did and just kind of like lock those gains in. And you know, here we go. Uh, you know, from October into the first couple of days of November, they see me just, you know, aggressively buying big tech, adding some cash and just, you know, despite whatever I was feeling, uh, these were the plays I was making. Here you kind of start to see me buying stuff like Warner Bros. Then again, you know, I'm, I'm selling out of a little bit of my Dropbox. Very happy with Dropbox. It was a great asset. Bought that at cost base around 19. Sold it in the early 20s for a few percentage of gain there. And this one is the last page. It's just really a last uh, final Warner Bros. Discovery buy. And uh, so yeah, I'm just happy that we still are outperforming. Um, I had to put more skin into the game in this portfolio in order to do so. However, you know, I was I'm confident in the companies that I bought in this dip, and I'm confident that in the long term they will be great companies that will compound. We saw the S&P recently recover to a level above 400. And personally, I'm looking at around a range of 330, maybe 420-ish to kind of start to sell something. Like I just kind of want to sell something at that point. As well as in my personal accounts, I think I've just been a buyer so much of stocks in that 380 or below level. It's just at that point when the spies recovered that much, it's just, I just absolutely want to just sell something just to lock in some gains. I think it is possible that SPY does make like a full on recovery. However, I do think it's also equally possible that SPY dips back down into those 380 levels again and just kind of, uh, you know, we stay in a shoppy market for a bit. I'm not ruling out that possibly possibility at all. Thank you so much for tuning into the video, guys. Again, just a quick portfolio update. Just want to really reiterate that point that um, in your investing journey, not every dip is going to be like a joyous time. Uh, kind of just depends on how you set yourself up for. Um, I really didn't see the Q3 big tech uh, earnings dipping as much as they did. However, that is what happened. Um, I am happy that we did see the quick rebound and I was happy that I did act upon it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. This is a Zoomer Value Investor uh, turning out, tuning out with this emergency uh, portfolio update meeting. Um, I'll probably have another update in like a few months, maybe another, let another quarter or two go by and then we'll throw up another update and just see where we're at. But um, as of now, I think these are good. Um, that was a tumultuous time. It was really scary. Just the market, the market will do what it does. Um, it is a, it has its own independent ability to act in own multitudes of ways. Thank you guys again. Peace.